Hey guys, hopefully you've just recently completed the weight in an elevator lab and you've seen that during an elevator ride your weight is not the same everywhere. There are points at the bottom of your path and at the top of your path where your apparent weight actually changes and it seems like you weigh more or less than you do. What we're going to do is take a look at why that is and try and figure out what this means for measurements of weight. So let's start by looking at the elevator car. So there's you standing in an elevator car, and in fact you're standing on a scale. So we'll draw that in there. And let's assume this is at rest. We're going to be describing a trip from the bottom floor to the top floor. And so we're starting at the bottom, and the elevator hasn't even started moving yet. So we are at rest. That means that our acceleration is equal to zero. There is no acceleration. And this means that the net force must also be zero. So we've got the force of gravity pulling down on our car. And we have an upward force, which is a tension force from a cable that is supporting the elevator. And those balance out, and so there's no uh, net acceleration here. So if we look at you and draw a free, di free body diagram of you, you have the force of gravity, and then you have a normal force pushing on you from the scale. So that's on you from the scale. And if we look at the scale, the scale, this thing underneath you here, it's feeling the force of gravity, sure, and it is going to have a normal force coming upward from the floor pushing on it, but notice also that it will have this second normal force. It's in contact with you, it's pushing up on you, you're pushing down on it. So that is the normal force on the scale from you. And what we mean by weight is the scale is actually taking a measurement of this force that you're putting downward on it. So all this collectively is what the scale reports as your weight. Now, let's look at a different situation. Our elevator was on the bottom floor, and now it's started moving up towards the top floor. So until it gets up to speed, it's going to be accelerating upward. Now, I hope you've noticed that any time there's an acceleration, there's always a net force involved. If there is a net force, there will be an acceleration. If there is an acceleration, there is a net force. And the acceleration and the net force are always in the same direction. So in this case, since it's accelerating upward, our net force has to be upward. Well, we've still got the same force of gravity pulling down on us. That doesn't change. But we know that the upward force has to be bigger than this. So that tension force is now bigger than our force from gravity. What this does, or what that means really, is just that the cable is pulling harder on the car and pulling it upward. Now, let's think about what effect this has on you. The car is going to start moving upward, but you have inertia. And that inertia is going to want to keep you in the same place. Forgive me, forgot to draw my scale there. That inertia is going to want to keep you in the same place. So you are wanting to stay there as the car moves up underneath you. And it gives you this feeling of being driven into the floor almost. You feel like the floor is pushing harder against you. And in a very, very real sense, it is. The net effect of this is almost as if the normal force has increased underneath you and so now it's pushing you up harder which has to happen in order to accelerate you upward there has to be more force upward on you now if we look at our scale we still have the force of gravity we still have our normal force from the ground but now we've also got this normal force from you 
So there's the, it's on the scale from U. And now that force is bigger than it used to be. Now remember that all this collectively was used to determine your weight, particularly this force. Now that force is bigger than it used to be, which means the scale is going to report your weight as being larger than it used to be. Now let's look at the situation at the top of the elevator where you start slowing down. And if you're slowing down and your velocity is in this direction, slowing down means that your acceleration is in the opposite direction, something like this. Given that we still have the force of gravity, that means that our tension force is much smaller. And when we look at the effect on you, gravitational force still does not change, but the apparent normal force is now much smaller, which means on our scale, we have the force of gravity just like always, but now our normal force on the scale from you is smaller. And this is where your weight comes from. So now, with, these, with the smaller force here, your weight is smaller than it used to be. So as the car is decelerating, your apparent weight gets smaller. You start to feel a little weightless as that happens. All right, so this is what's going on with um, your weight. As the car accelerates upward, you're going to be driven into the floor. Remember that inertia argument, which is a very nice way to think about this, is that you want to stay in the same place. The car moves out from under you, and so you feel driven into the floor, which makes your weight larger. On the other hand, if you're moving upward, and all of a sudden that force that got you moving upward in the same or in the initial case is decreased. Now you are accelerating downward, and what this does is since your inertia wants to keep you moving upward, that downward acceleration um, manifests itself as the smaller normal force. And so for that brief instant, you weigh less than you normally do, which is where you get that weird feeling in your stomach. That's your weight changing. Now, let's talk about something really important. I've been talking about weight this entire time and apparent weight as being related to the forces on your body. And this is exactly the case. I'm going to come back up here and give us some definitions that are worthy to know. Weight is the force of gravity on an object. Make sure I didn't run out of room on the camera there. So weight is the force of gravity on an object. Apparent weight is when I sum all those together. So sometimes apparent weight can change. But on the Earth, the force of gravity stays pretty constant. So your weight is the same everywhere. Notice that weight is a force. When we talk about mass, a definition that will serve us well right now is that mass is the amount of matter in an object. And notice that on the elevator, your mass didn't change. The amount of matter, the amount of stuff inside you never changed. You had the same amount of stuff when you were at rest, when you were accelerating upward, when you were accelerating downward. So all of that stayed the same. Your mass never changed, but your weight did. This means that mass and weight are not the same. They are different. When an astronaut uh, is launched into space and feels apparent weightlessness as they orbit the Earth, that just means that there's no apparent force of gravity on their, uh, on their body. So their weight is gone. Their mass, the amount of stuff in them, stayed exactly the same. And here on Earth, there's a nice way to calculate the weight of an object. And what you're going to see later uh, is that there's this relationship between force, mass, and acceleration that's pretty cool. And here's an early version of that. Weight equals your mass 
times 9.8 meters per second squared. That 9.8 meters per second squared is the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. So to find weight from mass, this is the equation that you're going to use. And I just want you to file that away in the back of your mind, and we will use it later.